Hello crafty friends, my name is Jessica and welcome back to my channel. Today we have number 10 in the Color Blend series, blending nutmeg, paprika, and allspice, along with these other inks that I pulled to coordinate. Now I can't talk about ink blending without talking about my favorite paper. This is Simon Says Stamp 130 pound cardstock and it has a very smooth surface. There are a lot of cardstocks on the market that would work great, but this is the one that I choose to use and I have it linked below if you're interested. Now we're gonna get started with nutmeg, paprika, and allspice. And I am going to start off by saying that I re-inked all of my pads before getting started today. And while I highly encourage you to do that, I went in a little heavy handed for all of my blends today and I should have went a little lighter knowing that they were super inky. I didn't dab off as much every single time. And so some of the panels get a little heavy with ink. So that's the general FYI for the video that all the inks are oversaturated. And I, as you can see here, the first color, I went in a little heavy, but it doesn't matter because these inks dry back beautifully. So while it looks like I made an oopsie and put too much ink down, they are gonna go dry back smooth by the time the end comes when we look at the four panels at the end. I'm really loving these brown oranges. I, I classify them as orange, but they're kind of orange, red, and brown, all kind of in one trio. But I do put them in my oranges when I color coordinate them in my ink sand. So here's the first trio. This is nutmeg, paprika, and allspice, this lovely warm, brownish red orange trio. So now we're gonna do a quick clean and move on to the next one. The next color combo is gonna be a little bit of a fun one. This is Aspen, Butter, and Nutmeg. Aspen is an older color, but Butter is one of the newer ones just recently released, so it was fun to play with that. A lot of the newer colors that Simon has released for this line have been more of these dusty, deep, royal colors, not the bright and vibrant that they originally released. And I'm loving how they're coordinating with the colors that are already in the line. So we're gonna get started with butter. I'm starting in the middle. I've done this a couple times when the middle color is lighter than the other two. It's good to get started with it first so that you don't over blend into it by starting at the end. So I like to do the butter in the middle and then I'm moving in with Aspen and that just lets me keep more of a middle color when blending. Aspen's not a normal color that I reach for, but after doing this ink blend, I think I'm gonna be reaching for it more often. It's in with the sage green, and I'm not sure the other color off the top of my head right now, but it's definitely that lovely sage green family, and I love how it coordinates with the butter. Now we're going in with nutmeg, that orangey color in the trio, and it's gonna blend really beautifully with that butter. Since I learned from the first panel that these ink pads were extra juicy, I did manage to lighten my hand when doing this combo. You're gonna see that when I compare the two panels at the end and how the nutmeg is just slightly lighter here versus on the other panel, but it could also be because it's paired next to that butter, so it's kind of toning it down a little bit. Here's the comparison. So I went a little lighter on the one this time and plus it'll dry back. You can see it's still a little bit splotchy. That'll eventually dry back solid and you won't see that kind of uneven splotchy look. So now we're gonna do a quick clean and move on to the third panel, which is probably my favorite. This is watermelon, allspice and Cabernet. Cabernet is also a newer color. Watermelon's one of the original released colors from the line. And this is just a really fun, reminds me of like taffy combo with that bright watermelon and kind of those muted allspice and cabernet colors. So while we're blending, I'm gonna talk about brushes versus foam blenders. I personally prefer brushes when using dye inks and I don't normally use foam blenders unless I'm doing oxides. That is just a personal preference. You can get the same results probably using both tools for both products, but I prefer to do brushes. I also love that Simon Says Stamp has color family brushes because I use the same brush for each color family and I just make sure that I really wipe off in between. Like as you can see here, I'm using a dark pink brush for watermelon and Cabernet and I'm just brushing off on a micro 
fiber cloth in between to ensure that most of the ink is off before I'm switching colors. Look at how fun this blend is. It's going to get a little bit more seamless here as I work the color onto the paper, but I'm really loving that little pop of watermelon that kind of fades into that deep, lovely color of Cabernet. This was probably the most unexpected color blend that I have for number 10 video today. It was the one that I was kind of hesitant to do, but I really love the way that it turned out. So this is watermelon, allspice, and Cabernet. Now we're gonna do one quick final clean and move into the remaining panel for the color blend series number 10. This one's a fun one. Uh, it's going to include peachy, latte, and paprika. Kind of a fun little color combo. It, the peachy and the latte blend way better than I thought they were going to. I took a chance and did not pre-blend these to, in, to see if they were going to be good selections. I just went ahead and went for it. So peachy is a really light orange, and then we're going to go into that light brown, and they're going to kind of look like they're the same color, but in person, they are definitely not. And even over there on my paper towel, you can see they're very different but they do blend very well together so that there's very seamless blending in between the two. Some ideas for this unexpected panel would be, I'm envisioning taking a stencil and using some mixed media white paste or gesso and kind of very loosely putting that over onto the right hand side of the panel and kind of not making sure that you're getting it all over, kind of being um, sloppy with it. And then letting that dry and then adding on maybe a succulent image or a cactus, something that's going to bring a little bit of a pop of green. And then this gives you more of like that desert feel to that card. So this is peachy, latte, and paprika. And that finalizes the card panels for today. We're going to do a quick clean. I am going to go ahead and heat set these off camera to ensure that they give the best results for how they dry back. I do personally like to let them dry back naturally, but in the, uh, the essence of time, I went ahead and heat set them. So we're going to look at the first one. This is nutmeg, paprika, and allspice, a really fun warm brown, red, orange trio. And then we're going into aspen, butter, and nutmeg. This would be a really fun desert scene too. You could use the green as the sky. It's kind of like a night scene. And then we have watermelon, allspice, and cabernet. This would look really great with a little wine glass on it, maybe a bestie card. And then the peachy latte and paprika for the final. I have links listed below for all of the inks that I used today. And I just want to say, take care.